This is a recent news story, but I found it kind of interesting and I wanted to talk about it. In Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, Rachel Berge came up with an interesting funnel system that has killed 12,000 spotted lantern flies in two weeks, just using two traps. So an average of maybe 600, potentially, assuming that it was the uh, same amount for each trap. For those who don't know, spotted lanternflies, like Corma delicatula, are exotic invasive insects from Asia, probably China in particular, and they, uh, they feed on so many different plants, many of which are agricultural crops, that it's going to be a huge problem in United States agriculture if people do not contain this pest. In the United States, there are eight states where spotted lanternflies have been found, not necessarily established, but found. Those states are Connecticut, Massachusetts, New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, and Virginia. Of those eight, Virginia, Maryland, Delaware, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania have quarantine spaces where Lycorma delicatula is considered established. The USDA has already shelled out like $17 million to Pennsylvania in order for them to be able to research and subsidize research effectively in order to find a biocontrol agent or some other way of killing this pest. It's already causing major financial problems for farmers in those areas. Arborists are having trouble, uh, apple growers are having a big problem, grape growers as well. And in my opinion, also, uh, cannabis could also become a huge uh, pest plant because there is research that indicates that Lycorma delicatula is, in fact, found on hemp in China. This was found to be the case in the 1940s and also in the 1980s. And I doubt that there's going to be much of a difference between then and now. One of the major problems with Lycorma delicatula is that it's very uh, bitter. Uh, Lycorma delicatula has many alkaloids in its body that are, you know, toxic or bitter to organisms that it's not totally toxic to. So birds don't really eat them, for example. A lot of animals don't eat them. So some of the more generalist insectivores in the area are unable to control this pest. That's one of the big problems is finding a biocontrol agent that's not native or at the very least naturalized is a big problem. Currently we know of two fungi that are entomopathogenic, Batcoa major and Bouveria bassiana, that infect the spotted lanternfly quite well, but we are still trying to find ways of utilizing them most efficiently. That research is still pending. There are also parasitic wasps that can be utilized potentially, but we're doing research in order to find out that the biocontrol agents don't go after non-target organisms. If they do, they would be a huge severe threat to the native ecosystem anyways, just as much as the spotted lanternfly would be, or possibly even worse. The University of Riverside in particular is doing important research with regards to finding parasitoid wasps and other organisms that can control Lycorma delicatula. In a way, they are expecting that Lycorma delicatula might actually get all the way across to the west coast. But perhaps if traps like these are deployed that utilize the spotted lanternfly's natural physiology against them and their behaviors against them, a novel sort of system can arise that could control the populations, or at least adequately stall them until a better system comes into place. This Berkey funnel is actually pretty novel and it makes a lot of sense to me when she explains it. Essentially it works like this. The spotted lanternfly has a behavioral tendency towards climbing upwards. This makes sense. It is a hemipteran that feeds on plant sap. It often feeds on the trunk and then will move up into the branches as well. By using this mesh netting and a barrier that only opens up into the funnel, one can trap a multitude of lantern flies by simply exploiting their behavioral tendency towards moving upwards. The materials are seemingly cheap and perhaps a 
sophisticated version of it would not even be that much more expensive. I have seen examples of the local communities, especially in Pennsylvania, taking it upon themselves to kind of talk about the spotted lanternfly. I mean, if it wasn't obvious, in some cases people are aware of this organism just everywhere in the streets, just like getting into people's like yards and um, they, it is pretty present. But for people who might be visiting who aren't aware of this sort of thing, I've seen like bars like name dishes after it or something like that. Like I saw something that was, um, it was like an alcoholic beverage or something that was called like, like stomp the bug or stomp the lantern fly or something like that. And um, it's been encouraged. It's like that scene from Starship Troopers where you have the kids who are um, mashing a bunch of cockroaches as sort of like a symbolic gesture towards uh, unacceptance of <laughs> and destruction for the um, the bugs that they are fighting, the interstellar like insectoid aliens. Oh my goodness, he's freaking out! <laughs> Wow, this is insane. Oh wow. Well. Everyone's doing their part, are you? The war effort needs your effort. At work, at home, in your community. The only good bug is a dead bug. In Geneva, the Federal Council convenes. We must meet the threat with our valor, our blood, indeed with our very lives. To ensure that human civilization, not insect, dominates this galaxy now and always. The spotted lantern flies could be neutralized or perhaps at least have some of the populations decrease and truncating the reproductive prolificness of the spotted lantern fly. The spotted lantern fly females can produce like 60 or so eggs in a single clutch and they lay it on everything. So they'll lay it on trees, they'll lay it on walls, they'll lay it on somebody's car, they'll lay it on the hull of a boat, they'll lay it on any sort of like solid structure for the most part. This is another reason why the potential for spread is so critically high. Somebody who is unaware or ambivalent might track the egg clusters into a place where it does not exist yet and then it will especially in places where its preferred host the tree of heaven or the chinese sumac exist which are all over california by the way as well as many other parts of the united states a site of infestation may initiate from that viable egg clutch personally i look forward to more novel cheap effective ways of controlling this spotted lantern fly coming out of Pennsylvania and other places. Hopefully it doesn't spread too much, but this is a particularly pernicious pest, and we've already been working on it for about five years now, since 2014. I'm not saying that I don't have confidence, but I do know that pests like these are very difficult to deal with. Hopefully the combined efforts of researchers and the community members at large can put a stop to the pest before it wrecks much of the local agricultural industry. Thanks for listening, and if you have any questions, please feel free to message me either on my science communication channel, Xenthanol, which you're listening to right now, or on my Instagram account, Sync Angel.